What is good, Grey Gang? We're here today. If you are a woodworker, you are about to enjoy this video. A craftsman, if you will. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building our homemade fishing lure. And let me just tell you guys, this ain't going to be easy. The knife of choice, KG pocket knife. We need this thing to whittle down the wood exactly to the shape we want it. I'll be right back. So the type of bait that I plan on creating is a topwater bait very similar to this. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. This is what you call a Zara spook. It is a topwater bait. If I had to be honest, kind of looks like a hot dog. And then it's got two hooks on the bottom. What this bait does is you throw it out, it sits on top. Perfect shape of this allows it to go like this. It call, They call it walk the dog, but it goes side to side as long as you pull it. That's our goal today. Make a homemade Zara spook type thing. I just want to tell you guys, like, that's not going to be easy. Um, I'm not good at woodworking. Adam did have one year of carpentry, but then again, Adam's not here. It's just me. And I've had zero years of carpentry. But I did build a birdhouse once, and it broke, but still built it. <laughs> By looking at the hot dog fit looking fishing bait, I think I'm going to find me a pretty good stick. I'm going to start off with oak because, I don't know, the only tree that's sitting in my yard right now needs to be gone. I know that a lot of fishing baits are actually made out of balsa. But then again, I don't even know what balsa is. And if I did know what it was, I doubt that it lives in Kentucky. But anyways, let's just head on over here. Dang, this is a big stick, dude. Dang, dude, this is thick. Mm, mm, come on, son. Ow. God. There we go. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, guys, I'm going to just cut the stick. I don't know about you, but I think I could probably catch a fish on it right now. Got it. As for size comparison, I think I got about the right size, about the right diameter or whatever. I just need to whittle it down to where it is beautiful. That's gonna be the hard part. Enjoy this time lapse with you've already guessed it. Listen here, Keith. I don't care what month it is. It's never a bad time to listen to Christmas music. Oof. Hey, I want to ask y'all something real quick. Have you ever built a homemade lure or at least tried to? If you have, tell me in the comments and tell me what it was and if it, if it worked. Also, hit the like button if you're not already because if you're not, like, come on, dude, what are you even doing? Are you just, like, sitting here? What are you doing? Are you bored to death? I don't know. Like, come on, dude, what are you doing? I think we're kind of close. Here's what we're looking at, guys. I mean, we got a decent profile of maybe a spook or something. As we hold it up to it, they are kind of starting to look about the same. They both point on both ends. I'll tell you what, guys. Let's actually take this out to the water. We got to test this thing, make sure it floats right. Okay, okay, okay. We are now at the pool pond. This is where we're going to be testing out our new lure. But first, we do have to give it a name. And because of its unique shape, bullet-like appearance, we're going to name it Chad. In honor of my goat. Which he actually thinks he's a dog. But anyways, here we go. Chad, test number one. Dang it. Dude, it sinks. Okay, that's a problem, bro. Hey, are y'all seeing that? I'm uh, glad we tested this. It sinks. Um, okay, that's not good at all. Ah, come on, man. We tried. I whittled that for hours. That's a very interesting thing. It sinks. For some, that would have destroyed the plan but for me, I got another idea. Our top water bait just turned into a suspending jerk bait. Chicken, dude. I mean, come on. Oh my God. Okay, well, round two, we gotta make it into a suspending jerk bait. It needs to be a whole lot thinner. So, uh, well, that's probably what I'm gonna do for the next five minutes. Shave this thing down to where it's almost like a pencil. So now I'm actually sitting on a boat looking at some of my actual fishing lures, and I have no idea how to attach a hook to this thing. I mean, it looks really cool. Not like a big hot dog, you know, like not like a foot long, but one of the little healthy ones that say they're made with turkey, it kind of does resemble one, so I think we're on the right track. The problem is attaching hooks to it. Now, I can get those little eyelets that look like this, but I don't know, I just, I can't find any, so that ain't gonna work. I think I'm gonna have to do something weird with wire. Yeah, this is, a, this is gonna be a whole lot harder than I thought, guys. I couldn't find anything I was looking for. Looking for a drill. Can't find it. 
Well, yeah, that's about it. That's all I was looking for. But one thing I did find is this. I don't know if y'all can see that. That is the key to our design. It's the thing I was talking about earlier. And But I've only got one of them. And the main thing we need it for is it, an eyelet on the hook. So, okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Now I've got to figure out a way to put hooks on this thing. And I'm not going to paint it because I'm too lazy. The hooks are going to be the hard part. Because best case scenario, I had two more of these. But I don't. So, I'm just going to have to figure out a way to put some kind of wires on here. Weirdly, just wire it on there. This is really hard. About 30 minutes later and a lot of failed attempts. I think I finally got something. Introducing Chad 2.0. I know guys, I know guys, I'm probably gonna be taking over the fishing industry pretty soon, but uh, yep, that's my suspending jerk bait. You can see the long slender design. That gives it the hot dog type shape we were talking about earlier. But then the hook holders is what's truly impeccable. The first one right here, you got a little piece of wire holding it, so not much spring attached to it. The other one is the complete opposite. A bunch of string. It can flex however it wants to. It is a piece of eight pound fluorocarbon tied to the hot dog shaped stick. Yeah, um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they can get entangled and they probably will. If we hook a bass, then we hook a bass. That's literally all I know at this point. I mean, I don't know if the wire's gonna break, if the line's gonna break. I don't even know if the eye's gonna hold up. But I mean, I guess it's just time. Let's head on out there and uh, see what we can do. And if for some reason this one doesn't work, I actually got this one in fan mail a little while ago. It it's a homemade top water as well. So one way or another, we should have a pretty good time. And we are actually at the pond right now. But before I actually head out there fishing, I know what you're thinking, okay? Little dude, where did you get that awesome shirt? Where can I get my own? Well, I'm glad that you asked, Derek. But you can actually get this one at kennelgrade1.com shop or the first link in the description. But if you guys are really wanting to support the channel, number one, subscribe. Number two, hit the like button. Number three, leave me a good juicy comment. Keep in mind juicy, because I like to go read them. And half the time roast y'all about them. But then four, you can also always buy merch. But I don't want to waste y'all's time anymore. Let me show you what's in my tackle box. Of course, we got the KG tackle box. I don't know if y'all knew we had these, but we do. Okay, enough plugging. Let me go to open it up and show you what we got in here. Some people would say we have a plethora of lures to choose from. Those people have the same IQ as Chad because we actually only have three lures. We have this one, which actually his name is Chad. We have this one, which doesn't have a name yet, but we'll go ahead and name him Mason because, I don't know, he looks like he's from Vietnam. If you know, you know. And then we have this bait. Well, we're not technically allowed to lose it because I didn't make it. You feel me? It's just not homemade. But I think for sure we definitely got to start off with this one since this is the one we created. If it doesn't work, we can also switch over to Mason. Kill dude, what fishing rod are you going to be using? It doesn't matter. Probably not going to catch a fish anyhow. Let's just say if I bring it to market, I think I'd sell out in a couple of days. I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna send a picture of this to Flair, and uh, well, you never know, they may release it as a Guggen bait next year. I'll tell you, man, I'll sell them the design. $25,000 and they can have it. Plus 75% royalties on uh, every bait sold, but that's just the business aspect. Here we go. KG Baits, jerk bait debut, number one. Dude. Not trying to like it definitely walks the dog, but then again it kind of it kind of looks like a kind of looks like a turd, dude. You know. Basically, I'm just gonna throw it out, walk the dog back. Oh my goodness, you are sneaky kidding me. Oh, can y'all see that? It's walking the dog perfectly. I'm so proud. I'm such a proud father. Gary Yamamoto, get a load of this, son. You're about to be out of a job. No way! Oh my goodness! What in the world? Dude, that was a giant fish. Did my hook come off? Dang it. That was a big fish too. That hook did come off, so he may have a hook in him. Literally, as soon as it hit the water, that thing just snatched it and ripped the hook off. Listen guys, 15K likes, and I will redesign this bait. I will go get the actual parts to build this, and we will catch a fish on it. But I am gonna go ahead and retire this lure for now. We can bring it out of retirement if we can hit 15K likes. I think this is gonna have a lot better um, possibility because, well, one has better hooks on it, to it actually floats probably and well there's, there's just there's kind of a lot of reasons why i think this one will do better but i do think this will do good not saying that the chad lure done bad or anything i mean it's still probably top 10 lures in the world but i just think this is maybe top five oh yeah we did actually well that's pretty crazy this is on a homemade one too it's just a what's he what's he look like what's his name i think it's jeff yeah, he definitely looks like a Jeff. And now on to the next assignment. I want to build another chicken coop. Not one to replace my old one, but another one. So here in about three weeks and four days, we are going to have a lot of chicks. And we need somewhere to put them. So I'm looking, hey, 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 let's go build a chicken coop. Now here's the plan. Just like in the early part of the video, I said I'm not a carpenter. Well, guess what? I'm still not a carpenter. However, 
I do have a lot of wood and a lot of trees, but we're not gonna use that wood or those trees, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. I guess y'all really didn't need to know that. Anyways, let me show you my plan. Okay, I actually don't have a plan, but I do feel like a, a pallet could come in handy. Maybe I can make the walls out of pallets because I have so many of them, so many that I don't know what to do with. So yeah, I'm a sinking Jedi. Yeet. I'm just gonna look up how to build a chicken coop. I mean, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Okay, guys, change of plan. My buddy actually came up. He's right over there. Where's he go? Oh, yeah, he's right over there. He's still there. His name's Chad. He's actually an architect. He studied at the San Diego Architectural Institute, so he kind of does know a lot about his craft. But he, he led me on, and he said, buddy, dude, if you try and build it out of pallet, why don't you just put them in a cardboard box? I mean, come on. I think a pallet would work, but you know what? He's the structural engineer, not me. You do you, Chad. Just if you see anything else I can do better, just let me know. I'll, I'll try my best. Anyways, Chad suggested that uh we make a... a what is it? We make a frame, and then we just put, like, plywood around. I think we're just going to listen to the experts. I mean, usually, if you don't know what to do, find an expert like Chad and just listen to him. He's been doing this for years. He knows mo much more than I do. Ain't that right, Chad? Mm-hmm. Chad, I need help. I ain't got a clue what to do. What are you looking at, Chip? Stay in your own lane, honey. You don't tell a fisherman how to fish. And you don't tell the chicken coop builder how did you build a chicken coop, ain't that right? Okay guys, I made a real uh, quick game time audible. Um, I'm not gonna listen to Chad because he's actually over there eating a flower. So, yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest guys, I think it's the wrong Chad. That's a go. I, I don't know man. Quarantine's rough and I mean y'all know it. It, 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 it's, it's hard to stay normal. Gray gang, I've got an idea. Guess what, big boy? Don't include you. You can hit the deck, son. Get on the ground. My plan is, um, uh, uh, uh hmm. it comes from a scavenger type mindset, as well as a mindset that says, hey, I am not a carpenter. I can't build anything. So here's the plan, guys. Right up here, I don't know if y'all remember, but back whenever I got the dog, which unfortunately had parvovirus and died, but we did have him up here in a cage for a little while. That cage is right over here. I'm just thinking, guys, like, come on, think about it for a second. What do you need for a good chicken coop? A place where they can get out of the rain and elevate. And so look right here, guys, we have an elevated thing. Put some roost poles right there in the middle, maybe put a nest box on each side. Guys, I think this is gonna work good. But Kendall, dude, what's the problem? Well, the structural integrity of this thing is very poor. <laughs> Basically, every joint is uh, rusted and not really connected anymore. So yeah, there's a lot of problems here, but I feel like with a little bit of bracing, maybe a few zip ties and duct tape, of course, I think it'll be good enough for chickens. I mean, put a sloped roof on there. I'm sure you don't care, but my plan for the chickens is to have one set down there in the actual chicken coop to where nothing can eat them, but then have another set of chickens right out here in the goat pen to where they can actually free range. And yes, they probably will get eaten by code. But our contingency plan is that we'll always have a few to breed eggs off of in the pen. Just like that, zero screws, we build a chicken coop. Kinda. Hammer ran a nail. No, I'm not using a hammer or a nail. I'm just gonna scavenge the old pen that has a structural integrity of 6%. If you wanna watch a Walmart fishing challenge, click right up here and right up here for all my other fishing challenges. Also, subscribe if you're not already, because if you're not, then what are you even doing? Like, come on, dude, for real.